In this video, I'm going to review the process of our RPG negotiation game, the role-playing game, which is totally online for our negotiations class at National Jungsin University. So to begin with, you can use any browser, but you do need to have a Google account. That's very important because all the documents are going to be on Google Drive. You can use Firefox, and today I'm going to use Firefox in this demo just to show you that you can use a different browser. Although, of course, as with all Google products, Chrome is guaranteed to work the best. Let's begin by logging into my Google account. In this case, I'm logging into my Google account as a teaching assistant. It could be a student. Uh, you just log in and, and you're ready to see your email. That's very normal. But notice over here on the top right side you have a number of these squares, a 3x3 three three grid. If you click there it shows all the different Google programs. Those Google programs include things like YouTube and, and uh, Gmail of course, but the one we're looking for is Google Drive. So you can click Google Drive and that'll take you right to your Google Drive account. As long as you have a Google account, you will also have a Google Drive account. You don't need to do anything special. Once you get in there, you may have many things on Google Drive that you already use. You may have photos you share, etc. But the thing we're looking for is documents shared to you from others. Because I have shared with you, or I have shared to you, the RPG game sheets for your group. Now, here we can see all of the group sheets. You, however, should only be able to see one, and that'll be your group. So if you're group number one, on this page for Google Drive, you'll be able to see negotiation score sheet group zero one. That'll be group one. If you're not group one, you will not be able to see group one. I can see everything here because I'm in the role of the teaching assistant, and she or he can see everything to help when we have class on Monday. So again, you click the what's been shared with me and then you go over and you can see what I've shared with you. Now you may have other things here shared by other people in which case you're going to have to look for the document. If you have many things there like tens or hundreds of documents then the easy way is just click up into the search bar and search for the word negotiation. And then that'll show you a result which should be the document I've shared with you. For today's case, let's pretend that I'm group number one. So in this video, we're pretending we're group number one. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. Let's begin the process. Let's say that it's Monday morning, 9 o'clock, time for class. My group should all be online together. We can see each other online when we all open this group one document, if we're in group one. Again, if we're not Group 1, you cannot see Group 1's document. So I go ahead and I open up the Group 1 document. Up here you can see the title, Group 1, so I'm sure I'm in the right group. You should not be able to open the wrong group. If, there is a, if you can open somebody else's group, please tell me. I've got to fix that. You can see in here that we have some details right at the very beginning, up at the top, RPG 0 and Group Number 1. We also have a password here and a product name. So the product we're going to be using today is just a test. We're just playing a, a little game here. So it's a test product. Normally we would have the product name. Okay, if everything looks okay, I know I'm in the right sheet. So that's moving along quite well. Up in the top right area, you can see the login picture of other people who are logged into this document. So you can see... This guy here, Clyde Warden, that's the professor because I'm also logged in on Monday morning. I'm there. And then here is the TA who's logged in and then all of your group mates will also appear here. We can communicate with each other because we can use the text box by just clicking there and go ahead and uh, send messages to each other. So I'm going to send a message from the teacher over to the student. So you would have seen a message from me, and it looks like that. Good morning. And I'll say, is everyone here from your group? Because I would like everyone to participate. Now, does that mean you need to be together, physically together, in the same room? No. 
You could be in your dorm room. Another person in your group could be at home. Another person could be at school on campus. It makes no difference. I just want to make sure that you're all logged into the same page. If you have five people in your group, it would be best five people are all logged in. I want everyone to participate and see what's happening. Of course, it's possible one person or two people can't make it, but it would be best if that's just rare and doesn't happen very often, or it's just one person. Remember, your group is going to earn a group grade. If you don't all work together, it's really tough. And this part in the morning is really key for everyone to be on the same page, to understand the same idea. And then I'm going to say something like, are you ready? And then the students will answer something like, uh, we are ready. And what you need to do is go to the dice page. So you click that tab down at the bottom. We have a buyer, a seller, a dice, a marketplace, and a defaults tab. You need to click the dice tab. I will also, on the teacher side, see what you're doing. I can see where you are. And so you come over to the dice page, and I will then send you a message when you've told me you're ready, and I'll say, roll now. Wait, let me fix this for one second. Before you roll, it'll look like this, actually. Yeah. Before I say go, it'll look like this color here, red. Do not roll. Wait. Now this little window may get in your way, so what can you do? You can open the chat window in another location to be out of your way a little bit or to be smaller or put it on another screen if you have a couple screens would be good. Okay, I'm just going to close it for now. So when you first enter here, it's going to say do not roll. Then you and I are going to talk to each other a little bit over the text box. Are you ready? Is everybody there? Everything good? And then finally, You'll say, I'm ready, and then I will send you a message, and I'll say, roll now. I'll send you a little message, but you won't be able to do anything until that red area turns to a green area, and I'm going to do that now. Once you see that change to roll now, that means that you come to this space here, this one area, which is D. 9, the D9 space. Nothing else on this page can be changed by you, only this. And you type in any number you want. 888-999-77, small number, big number, it makes no difference. And then you press enter. When you press enter, all of the dice numbers will change. So, only one person should change that number. And they should only change it once. Here's the problem. If you keep pressing, the dice will keep changing. And if other people in your group press enter, the dice will change. So you only want to do it once. As soon as I see you do it, I'm going to change the status so you cannot roll again. But sometimes the internet can be slow, or at least not as fast as you can press enter. So that would be a problem. So Put in a number, you press enter, then you stop. On my side of the game, I will take a moment to see what you've done. Then I will change the roll so you cannot roll it again. Do not roll, you see? And then on the top left side in that yellow area, I'm going to insert or paste your new numbers. Sometimes this takes a second, so you have to give me a minute. And now your numbers that you rolled will appear in the top left area in that yellow space there. So right in there. You cannot roll anymore. You can't change the numbers. And if you press enter, if another student press enter, the numbers may have changed. But I will be pasting the numbers that you originally rolled the first time into here, and now nothing can change. So if we look at our scores, what do we have? We have a resistance of 5, a flex of 1, 
a maximum of five, delivery five, units four, importance one, quality one. And then the really important one is, am I a buyer or seller today? And that's minus one. What does minus one mean? If I come down here, I can see one is buyer and minus one is seller. So group one for this example is going to be a seller. Now that's all you need to do for meeting with me. I will then text you and say something like, let me give you an example, what I usually say. You are a seller this time. I'll ask, do you have any questions or anything I can help you with? Now, usually remember, I'm going to be very busy during this time. My TAs are going to be online helping also. But if you do have a question now or when the other groups are finished would be the best time to ask. Or you can text and I can hand it off to my TAs and we'll ask you to please wait maybe 30 minutes and then when everybody's done I can turn my attention to help you so it's a great time Monday morning 9 a.m. when we're online to get my attention and to ask any questions you have through the chat room of course separately you can come and make an appointment at my office anytime or you can email the negotiation assistant the teaching assistants email at any time but because this is the RPG beginning maybe you have a question about the game or your situation in the game or some rules about the game now would be a good time to ask but you have to be patient because we have many groups and I need to finish this first for everybody so you may say something like professor warden I have a question can you can I wait for you and I'll, I'll tell you yes in 30 minutes just stay online and I'll get back to you okay so if everybody has no questions then I'm gonna go ahead and I text back to them and say good luck and then I will close my window and disconnect and you are then free what does free mean? Free means you have everything to do on your own now. Nothing more to do with me. Of course, you can ask questions or come see me, but that's it. Now begins the negotiation process. Let's look at how we actually understand our negotiation position, our beginning position. We've rolled the dice, but what does that mean? So next, let's turn to our position. To see our starting position, we're going to need to look at the tab of buyer or the tab of seller so of course if we go over to buyer you can see right away there's a problem because in the product price area there's a message that says not buyer that's because we just rolled the dice we got a negative one came up and that means we're a seller so we cannot use this tab of buyer However, when we click on seller, we do see the numbers have come through. Now these numbers are the base price, the base units, and your flex points. Where does the base price come from? Remember that will be the product that everyone is buying and selling on that day. I sent it to you in a PDF before 9 a.m. So everyone in your group should have received a PDF that explains the product, its features, its price and the number of units so that's fixed for everyone but then you rolled the dice remember and when you rolled the dice that changes things so for example the base price is 1500 I think in this case it's US dollars and we went ahead and we rolled a five just a moment ago and that five means that the base price will change to be 0.92 of that base so now the resistance becomes 1380 I'm a seller this means that when I sell this product I must sell this product for 1380 or more I cannot sell it for less if I sell it for less that's going to be a problem now remember the game has no rules and you can make many deals with many groups so when I say resistance and when I say you cannot sell for less, what do I really mean? I, I mean it's up to you to do what you want. You could sell for less. You could. However, of course, that was going to hurt your score in the end, as we'll see when we get to the end of this page. The same is true as, of your base units. So we began with everybody has to sell, in this case, 15,000 units or buy 15,000 units. You rolled the dice and you rolled a 4. A 4 is 1 times 1.04 
and that means your mod units is 15,600. That means you will be able to produce, your factory can produce 15,600 units of this product. Your flex points is one, and that's not so high. The highest could have been six. We did not get six, so hmm, not such good luck there. And then the importance is one, small potatoes. Why is, why is it small potatoes? Because that's the least important. So here is the information we need to begin thinking about how are we going to make a plan and what are we going to set for our goals for this negotiation? Because we can see clearly the importance of this is one, which means very small, small potatoes. So even if we do a really good job negotiating, this is not going to be an important negotiation. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try, but it may be a chance for us to be more flexible and take more risk or to find a cooperation with other groups because we don't have a lot to lose. Next, we see the summary of our score. and This is really useful just to quickly see what are my important numbers. So my sell minimum is 15,600 units. My minimum price is 1,380. My maximum quality is low. And my maximum delivery is fast. Now those numbers appear down here on the left side quality and delivery and you can see you rolled the dice of one and you rolled the dice of five and the picture shows the green line which is what you rolled so the quality is low now what does that mean that means I'm a seller and I produce low quality can I produce average quality can I produce high quality it's possible but it will cost me more so my most efficient quality for my factory for my supply channel is low my delivery, however, is fast. What does that mean? Can I deliver average speed? Can I deliver slow? I could, and when I deliver slow, I save money. So I remember saving money is just like making money, right? So I save money, I make more money. But I can deliver fast without spending more money. So that's an advantage I have. So you can see the picture is very mixed. I have the, uh, this amount I need to try to sell. I have a resistance price and I have quality which is low which is not great but I also have fast delivery which is very good and finally I know that my negotiation situation is not so important okay so that gets us um, pretty far so far we now understand our beginning position from our beginning position we're then going to begin to negotiate with other groups. And that's what we're going to look at now, how to make a deal. Okay, when you're ready to make a deal, we have two links on your RPG score sheet. One link is to the deal report, and another link is to the deal cancel report. So, you can click either one of these. Let's go ahead and click one now. So I'm going to go ahead and click the deal report link. And that will open up a form again on Google. And this is the details of the deal I'm going to make. Let's go ahead and make a deal and see how it works. I'm going to choose first what RPG are we in? How do you know which RPG? I forget. Go back to your RPG sheet and right there you can see RPG 0. So any information you need you should be able to come back to your game sheet and see the information. Okay, so far so good. My group number is 1. I'm pretending to be group 1. I need a password. Okay, where do I get a password at? Every group, you're going to see your password again on your RPG sheet. And so here is my password. I take that password and I go ahead and copy it in here. Now you want to be careful. You don't want the other side to see your password. So if you take a screenshot or if you capture this screen, maybe you want to do it without the password there. Or maybe you want to uh, 
uh, cover that over with a graphic. In fact, you could do something like just take a screenshot right there, something like that. Okay, next I need to have a deal ID. How do I do a deal ID? Well, a deal ID, I go ahead and click this other page and it's going to give me a number. It takes a moment. See that number? It's always changing because every deal needs to have a unique ID or a timestamp. So I just go ahead and click that button. Now I have a number. I go ahead and I put that number into this box. Whoops, did the wrong thing. I need to paste it in. But this number is not just for me. This is also for the group I'm going to make a deal with. So let's say I'm making a deal with group number two. My counterpart is group number two. I'm talking to group number two right now on Facebook or on uh, Skype or maybe face-to-face -face or maybe on my phone. I need to give them this number, the deal ID. Our two groups must have the exact same deal ID. If we don't have the same deal ID, the, ID, the deal will not succeed. It will fail. So I'm going to make a deal with group number two. That's the next thing I choose. And am I a seller or a buyer? In this case, I am a seller. And how many units am I buying? Let's say I want to buy 500 units. You do not have to buy everything from one group. You can divide up and buy from other groups or sell to other groups. In this case, I'm a seller. I got that wrong. I'm a seller. So I'm going to sell 500 units to group two. And I am buying or selling at this price. So let me go ahead and just make up a price here. Our resistance price is 1380 so I'm going to go ahead and say I got a uh, 1400 So I sold it for more than, which is my goal. And I'm going to go ahead and sell at a certain quality. So remember my quality situation. My quality is low, which is a bit of a problem, right? But let's say I made a deal and I could make the deal for two, which is medium. So I'm going to probably lose something on that. However, on the delivery speed, remember my delivery speed was fast. So I'm going to now make this deal. Maybe I was able to deliver it to them at the average speed. Of course, we had to negotiate, right? We both agree. Group two and group one agree to this. They don't know my secrets and I don't know their secrets. And then when you're done, you go ahead and you send in this form. I have to make sure I keep this number because this number is very important. Okay, so I'm going to send in the form. Okay, and that is one deal done. Okay, so I'm like, wow, that's great. Everything is good. However, you need to remember that the group you made a deal with, they also need to turn in their deal information. If they do not turn in their information, then things are not going to match. Anyway, let's come back now and look at our RPG game sheet. And no information changes up at the top. But what we do see here is we do have a deals come through. Here's the deal ID number. So we always can see the ID number. So if you need to give that number again to your group, to your counterpart, you can go ahead and do that. I made a deal with group number two. What was the price? 1400 remember? What was the quantity? The quantity is 500 And we just saw some pop-up notes there. You can see some notes here. Under resistance, you cannot sell for a price under your resistance. I think the system may warn you. Um, I'd have to check if the system actually stops you. Um, I have to check about that. Um, yeah, this thing is so complicated, sometimes I forget how I uh, arranged it. But anyway, we'll give it a try in a second. So this is our weighted average price because we have 500 units at a price of 1400 So then we go ahead and times that out for 700 here, 700,000 I mean, 700,000. And of course in the end, what we do is we divide the total by the um, number of units 
and we get the 1400 we only have one deal so far so the price was 1400 so the weighted average is 1400 of course so that just gives us a quick summary next we come down to this bigger box here and we can see that we have a deal this number with group number two quality two delivery two and units 500 now remember the quality we sold for two which is the a level higher than what we actually are able to because when we look up here remember our quality is low not average but we sold it for average so what does that mean that means that we have a quality gap of minus one what does that mean well if you have a gap here you need to somehow make up for that gap and how do you make up for that gap you're going to have to use a flex point now the problem here is when we began this game we only had one flex point that's not much flexibility in the system for us however in this case we only need one so we go ahead and we use one on the delivery remember our advantage is we have the ability to deliver fast but we made a deal to delivery deliv make a delivery at average speed so that means that we make a flex point because there's a gap when there's a gap it'll be a negative gap or a positive gap and a positive gap you make you add you get flex points and for a negative gap you lose you spend uh, you go down that many points so what's interesting here is our total flex point gain or loss is zero because of course one plus negative one is zero and that means we still have one flex point left and how many have we totally spent we have spent zero so far because we made one and we spent one so the total is zero okay so far so good now we can also see down here that we have begun to get a score because we now have some numbers in the system so let's go ahead and look over this we have a weighted average price here and we have our resistance we subtract those and the difference is 20 because we're a seller of course we would like to sell for more so now we're doing well that's good we divide that by our resistance to end up with a fraction and that's a 0 0.01 and then we times that by 100 to get back to a, a above a decimal so 1.45 now what does this mean it doesn't really mean anything it means some groups could have more some groups could have less if I had sold the price to be lower than than 1400 maybe I sold it just to be 1380 just my resistance then right now my score would be zero so far uh, up to here would be zero because I didn't <laughs> didn't do anything above my resistance plus flex points so now we're at 2.45 and then we're going to times importance so you can see importance is a big one if we had a two importance we would now be right over over about five but instead we only have one importance so we're going to stay at 2.45 and then times inventory sold so how much of the inventory did I sell well actually I only sold a little bit because I only uh, put out there uh, how many was it 500 units I think I look up here 500 units that's not many compared to my total it's just three percent of the total and then it comes out to have an, a score so I think the score gets rounded up no decimals so one well one seems like a small number but hey we've only just begun we only made one deal now one thing to pay attention to is you do have a limited number of deals you can make so let me see how many is that one two three four five six seven spaces for deals so that's a little bit limited you need to pay attention to that now we are a seller so we do have one more special case for a seller so let's go ahead and look at some of the special rules now for the seller if you're a seller you have a production situation right how much can your factory produce and what we did remember was we took the beginning number which were the base units 
and we had a mod unit. So our factory is able to produce 15,600 units in this example. Production maximum. That means what's the maximum you can produce? Okay, the maximum is equal to the mod units. Where's the mod units? Right up here. 15,600. 15,600. Let me zoom in a little bit, get a better picture of that, right? There we go. What if you want to produce more? Let's say you find a buyer and the buyer is giving you a really good deal. You have a great opportunity or maybe you want to help a buyer because you have a good relationship or whatever. So you want to produce more. So you want to overproduce. Can you overproduce? Well, no, you cannot unless you spend something. And what do you spend? You spend flex points. So how does this work? For every 10% over your maximum production, which is your mod units, you must spend a flex point. So one flex point to increase production 10%. This will be calculated automatically down in this area here when you input your deal sheet. So for example, we can see here in this area overproduction price. So if you overproduce, it will automatically calculate here and remove a flex point for every 10% you go over. You have a maximum of seven deals and one flex point for every 10% increase. Now, what does the 10% mean? It means any number between zero and 10%. So if you overproduce 11%, how much will that cost you? Two flex points because you've gone over 20%, basically. They come in these big chunks. So flex points are kind of set, and you need to pay attention to that. Here's a short summary just to remind you very quickly of how the deals work and how you benefit or... Uh, lose something, how you gain or lose. Going lower gains flex points. Going higher spends flex points, in this case because we're the seller. So going lower, in this case like for example lower price, uh, lower speed, or here higher, higher speed, lower speed, these kinds of things. Canceling a deal will have a cost if both sides do not agree. So we can cancel the deal. Well, how can we cancel? Well, we come right back up to the top and we push the cancel button here and we're going to get another form to cancel the deal. But before we do that, let's look at our counterpart because we've just looked at the group number one example and that example was a seller. Let's now jump over to the counterpart, I think right here, and this is group number two. So group number two, we're going to scan down here, and we can see group number two is a buyer. Why? Because if they go to the seller page, what do they get? Not seller. They cannot use the seller page. They're a buyer. Okay, they have the same information that the seller had, 1,500, 1,500, uh, 15, oh no, I'm sorry, 15, 1,500, 15,000, got my numbers mixed up. Same. But what's different? This is different. The resistance is different because it went through the dice roll for them. The mod units is different because it went through the dice roll for them also. The importance could be different. In this case, by coincidence, it's the same. The flex points could be different. In this case, they have two flex points, right? Again, for the buyer, same thing. They can come over here and very quickly see their maximum situation. Now let's go ahead and complete the deal we just made with the group number one. Group number two, who's the counterpart, must also make the same deal. So they're going to go ahead and open up a deal sheet. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the deal sheet for the buyer. Okay, I've completed that, and let me just go over real fast for you. 
So we're making the deal now for the buyer. And this is RPG zero, group number two. I am now group number two. My password, where do I get the password? Remember the password is back on your RPG sheet. I have a deal ID. Where did the deal ID come from? Remember we both use the same group ID. The buyer and the seller use the same ID. Where did we get it? From this page here where we click and get a number, a timestamp. Who am I making a deal with? I'm making a deal with group number one. I am a buyer because group number one is a seller. And how many am I buying? 500 units. And what's the price I'm buying for? It's 1,400. What's the quality I'm buying? Two. And what's the delivery speed I'm buying? Two. These numbers must be exactly the same for the buyer and the seller. And we just do this one time each group for one deal. So this means that every deal needs two of these forms. One from the buyer, one from the seller. I submit. And now let's jump back to group number one. Here we are, group number one. So now we can check the results by looking on group number one on their RPG sheet. And we can come down and we can see that this is the deal we sent. And here we see the, de the details of the deal. But we also can see over on the right side this little note here. Deal reports match. Deals report match. That means that when the seller sent their one report and the buyer sent their one report, the numbers were the same. If those numbers do not match, that means that one of the buyer or seller team did not correctly put in the information and that's a way to try to cheat. If that happens, of course, things won't work out exactly right. So in this case, let's say that um, I'm still group number one here and I put in my information like this, but group number two, instead of putting in the information of quality two, they went ahead and said, hey, I think we can just get high quality and cheat this little game. And so I'm going to change that to be quality of three. Okay, so I've changed it in the database so that group number two tried to cheat by buying quality three instead of quality two. And in that case, we're going to have a little bit of a problem when we refresh this page, I think. Yes, there we go. You can see now deal reports mismatch. Now, you do have to be a little bit patient sometimes. This is Google Docs. If your internet connection is slow, um, it could be slow. Also, the calculation can be quite complicated. Sometimes up here in the top area, you'll see a little bar of progress. And when you see that bar, that means you're waiting for the data to come through from the database over the internet. So just keep an eye open for that. That means it's updating. There you go. There's the bar. You see the bar? That's the updating bar. When you see that updating bar, that means data is coming through. Be patient. Don't go crazy. All right. So what we have here again is I'm group number one. I went ahead. I made a deal. I thought I put the information in correctly, but look what happened. Deal report mismatch. So what am I going to do now? Well, this means either the buyer or the seller put something in wrong. They could have put in the wrong deal ID. They could have put in the wrong quality. They could have put in the wrong quantity. They could have put in the wrong delivery time. Or they could just be trying to cheat. In any case, that deal is not going to count. So you're going to have to do something to fix that. Now, if you contact the other group and you can ask them what happened, and they may deny that they did something wrong. You could go ahead and cancel the deal. We're going to look at canceling the deal in a moment. Or you could talk to the other group and maybe you decide, oh yes, I did something wrong. I put in the wrong deal ID or I put in something wrong. If that's the case, then you can send an email to the teaching assistant email and be very clear. Who are you? 
what RPG game are you talking about? And what is the exact situation for what group? What do you need to change? This is one reason it's important to take a screenshot of your deal form and also your cancel form if you make a cancel. Because when you make your deal, if you type something wrong, how will you know it was wrong unless you have a screen capture of it? Also, if you typed it correctly and you want to show the other side, your counterpart, hey, I did everything right, it must be something you did wrong, you again need a screen capture. So it would be really good to keep a screen capture on your own of the deal report, and that way you can prove later what happened. In any case, if you talk to the other group, in, the, in this example, group one, group two, and we say, oh, I must have typed something wrong, my bad, I did something wrong, you can email TA Assistant, be very clear, what do you want me to change, and I'll go ahead and change that inside the database to match. Now, once I make the change, for example, maybe in this case, group two did not choose high quality on purpose, they just made a mistake, they thought they could do that. I go into the database, I can change that, and once I've changed that, the data will come through to your spreadsheet, or next time you refresh, it'll come through, and you'll be able to see that the deals actually match after I made that change you requested. So if you make a mistake, that's okay. What about the chance that nobody made a mistake, everything they wrote was correct, but I don't want that deal anymore, or the other side keeps saying they did not make a mistake, even though I think they did make a mistake. So how can we fix that problem? That problem is going to take a deal cancel form. There it goes. It came through. Deal reports match. So the deal report matches because I changed it in the database. Let's say that the other side, I just don't agree with them or they will not admit they did something wrong or maybe they did everything right and I did everything right, but I still want to cancel the deal. Why? Because I found a better deal. So what can we do? Let's try the cancel form. So the deal report is here and this is the cancel deal report. And how does that work? Well, it's very similar. What round are we in? Round zero. What group number am I? I'm group zero. What's my password? I have to get my password. And remember, your password is going to be on your RPG page. Put in my password. What ID do I want to cancel? How do I know the ID of the deal? Remember, the deal ID is listed here. The deal ID is also listed here. So I go ahead and copy that. And now I go ahead and put that in here because I'm going to cancel this deal. Who did I make a deal with? I made it with group number two. And in this case, group number one is a seller. And then I can write a little reason here. Now, you don't have to write a reason, but you can if you want to. We found a better deal. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. However, there's something you need to remember, and that's right up here at the top of the form. It might cost you money, or it might cost you something, to cancel the deal. Let's look at some examples. Three possibilities. A. Both parties cancel. If buyer and seller both agree to cancel, they both fill out a cancel form. That means the buyer fills out a form and the seller fills out a form. Remember, the deal ID must be the same. So again, it's the same as before. If you both agree, then group one fills out one cancel and group two fills out one cancel. That's example A, possibility A. What about B? You cancel, but the counterpart does not cancel. So that means I cancel, but the side I made a deal with, they don't want to cancel. So what happens? It's going to cost me. How much will it cost? It will cost one half flex point for every hundred units of the deal. In this case, we had 500 units for this deal. So that would be 500 times 0.5 flex points, 2.5 flex points. C, you could not cancel. Yeah, you did not cancel, but your counterpart cancels. That'll cost you nothing. So, 
if you did not cancel but the other side canceled you pay nothing but the deal is still canceled all right so I could send this in and again here I'm acting as group number one right group number one right there so I'm gonna go ahead and send it in we can see what happens send it in and I can go back to my negotiation page zoom out a little bit here again remember especially if you're using another browser updates can take time okay so let's continue looking at group one I just canceled the deal and we can see here in this average weighted price area the deal I canceled has a line through it that means it was canceled I can also come down to the details of the report and you can again see a line through there canceled you can also see that the deal reports match that was the original matching but then there's another message here seller canceled deal because I'm group one in this example I'm a seller I canceled the deal so seller canceled deal password pass that means the cancel password worked so you cannot cheat and cancel another group's deal that would be cheating you need a password so be careful keep your password secret and then finally here you can see there is a price there's a cancellation fee why is there a cancellation fee because only one side canceled the seller canceled the buyer did not cancel so there is a 2.5 fee now maybe I'm waiting for the buyer to cancel so this money this price would go away but if they don't cancel I'm gonna have to pay that price now let's look at the other side of this deal this would be the buyer group number two and we can come down and again here's their information but now you can see it's canceled so the weighted average that's canceled there and you can see down here we have a cancel deal password pass that was it was approved the deals report the deal reports match but then what happened the seller canceled the deal the seller canceled the deal so any points I made from that deal I don't make any more if I made a good deal and I had gained some flex points those flex points would now be not gained I don't lose anything though because I'm not the one that canceled the deal okay now we come back to group one here group one they canceled the deal and you can see up here little gray area 2.5 is the price for canceling that deal CXL is short for cancel okay so I think that gives you a nice introduction to how to play the RPG game the best thing is give it a try and if you have questions talk with your group colleagues and then send an email to the negotiation TA email and the TA will help you and if they can't help you then they'll let me know and I can help you good luck with your negotiation RPG